All right, let's go. Hi, I'm Carrie Levitt Bouzian, and I'm the Paleontology Collections Manager here at the Natural History Museum of Utah. We are behind the scenes in collections, and we get to see some of the stuff that people don't get to see on display. You know, only about 1% of the stuff that museums ever have ever goes on display. Everything else is back in the collection space. This is actually where we store the real bones. A lot of times we actually put on replicas on exhibit because we don't want them to get damaged because they're really important. And so I'm going to show you some of the differences between the real bone and the replicas. So I'm standing in front of my favorite dinosaurs, the Ceratopsians. We have Cosmoceratops down here and we have Diabloceratops up here. And so Cosmoceratops is about 75 million years old. He's from the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument and he's from the Kaparowicz Formation. And it's a really cool dinosaur. The media called him the horniest dinosaur ever because he has the most ornamentation on the back of his head. I'm going to show you some of that ornamentation right now. So if you get up close and personal here, to kind of orient yourself, we have the nose here, the big beak-like nose, very characteristic of Ceratopsians. It has a nose horn on its nose there. The jaw is in life position, which is really, really rare. Usually it disarticulates when uh, the animal dies. And we can still see some teeth here. We have a horn out of each jugal, so cheekbone. We have a horn over each eye. You can see that here. And we have a bunch of horns on the back of the frill. And so this is really rare because, like I said, skull bones usually disarticulate or fall apart like a bunch of puzzle pieces when the animal dies. And so having a skull this complete is super rare. Likewise, we have uh, Diabloceratops eaten eye up here. So this guy's about 80 million years old. And he's also very complete. You can see the jaw is not in life position anymore, but the nose and the teeth and the orbital horn, the eye, the jugal horn, and the frill is pretty complete too. So a lot of times people are confused about what's the real bone versus the cast. And so I'm gonna point a couple of characteristics out that you can tell when it's a real bone. So we have Diabloceratops up here, and a couple things you can see are the different colors and textures. So we have some matrix, or what we call matrix is rock, that has been left in the nose, because this would be a hole and the eye would also be a hole, and we want to leave in the actual dirt that was buried with this animal to actually provide structure for the orbit. And so you can see that, you can actually see the tool marks from when the preparator was preparing it. You can see there's some different colorations. This horn is, is a different color, it's slightly lighter than the other, uh, other parts of the bone. That could have been exposed to the sun longer. We didn't find the rest of the part here, so that's been made up and you can see again the different colors. So here we actually see the teeth, and you can see it's actually a different color than the rest of the bone, because the enamel actually permineralizes in a different way than the actual bone does. And a lot of times it's still shiny, which is actually it helps us find it in the field. Cool. So this is an Astutoceratops titus eye, and it is a, a replica. And so uh, when the discoverers found it, we found a complete nose, we found a couple of the, the orbital horns, and we found one side of the frill. And so things in nature are symmetrical, and so if it has one giant hole in its uh, fr frill here, we can assume that the left side would also have that. And so we mirror image them, and that's kind of what we know what the back of the skull looks like. And how you can tell them when they're mounted in the museum is usually things behind glass are real. Things that are actually out and mounted are usually replica. Usually if they have a pole mounted up through it, that is usually a sign that it's a replica as well. This is a really, really good replica. The uh, people who did this gas and design actually uh, took the matrix, the, the rock that we found it in, and actually pressed it into the mold so it actually looks really real. It has a wonderful texture to it. But you can see it's all one piece and it's just an exact replica of it, but it's one piece. So this is an example of a plaster jacket that has been brought back to the prep lab to actually be cleaned up. And so uh, we've cut it open and you can see those are usually made of paper towel, burlap, and plaster. So you can see the different layers of burlap. And what's neat is that this is uh, actually still in the matrix, the rock that it was found in. And so uh, you can actually see the, the prep marks, the tool marks from when people were actually cleaning it up. And you can see the difference again between the bone and the rock. They're different color, they're different texture. Uh, also bone sticks to your tongue if you lick it. Um, 
And uh, so the, uh, you can see it's a, a partially articulated Allosaurus uh, vertebral column. And uh, we've left it in the jacket because it is in articulation and we want to keep it that way so that we don't actually uh, lose that articulation. So when we're in the field, we uh, take the rock that uh, the bone is in, we, we actually do what we call mushrooming. We find the bone and we dig it uh, around all sides of it, kind of making a protective barrier of rock so that we can actually transport the fossil in the rock that it was found in back to the museum so that if it's bouncing up and down on the back of a truck, it doesn't shatter in a million pieces. So we actually keep the rock in there to actually support it and protect it on its way back to the museum.